Commissioner Bunny- Save it, kid. I, I don't have much time. They're coming for me. I I'm sorry. I was wrong. It's all gone wrong. You need to get- My fellow Americans- Are those? What the shit? We've long suspected that video games were the cause of innumerable social evils, from the threat of violence to the plague of obesity, but until now, no one had been able to offer empirical data to support this belief. Even though, as all real American patriots know, it is belief, not knowledge, where truth is found. But the events of the last several years involving the public menace known as the Game Overthinker has placed this issue in stark relief. Contrary to what you were told by a police cover-up orchestrated by the now-deposed Commissioner Bunnyface, It's one of Faccio. We now know that the treacherous Necrothinker was in reality known Overthinker Associate Retrothinker, now a fugitive from justice in the company of the interdimensional terrorist, the Anti-Thinker. We know that the Robothinker was merely a harmless military drone before it was corrupted by its exposure to violent video games. <laughs> You know, that does actually look pretty bad for us. These and so many other recent atrocities, including vast public destruction, the opening of a dimensional gateway in Wario's Woods, and the unforgivable act of defending Metroid Other M, the worst crime against man in the history of everything, have one common thread. The involvement of the Game Overthinker. Based on this, I have chosen to vacate the imprisonment of Pyrothinker and Cryothinker, not merely because they are fellow ninja Americans like myself, but because I believe them to be innocent victims persecuted by the overthinker menace, and have installed them as my personal bodyguards. Together, we will announce the formation of the first ninja political movement, the Oolong Tea Party. I can think of a dozen things that make absolutely zero sense about that proposition. I know, right? Oolong is traditionally thought of as a Chinese tea blend, but ninjas are Japanese. Make that a dozen and one. Though we may be small at this juncture, the Oolong Tea Party will pledge to work with like-minded representatives, be they Republicans, Democrats, the Congressional Lobster Caucus, or the French, toward the goal of restoring the laws restricting digital entertainment, with an ultimate goal of protecting honest, hard-working, God-fearing real Americans from the scourge of video games. To the gamers, I say, boys, your free ride is over. And to the game overthinker, I say, your time is coming, young man. I think we're getting the gist of this one, sir. Is there anything else we can do to pass the time? This kind of seems like the most important thing we could possibly be doing at this moment, but okay. Uh, you want to play Call of Duty Ghosts? Ah, new Call of Duty. What's this one about? Uh, you play as an angry young man who wants to join a secret heavily armed militia that all wear matching hoods and are dedicated to the mission of keeping South Americans from crossing the border into the United States. <laughs> That's a very funny parody of Call of Duty's problematic racial and geopolitical history and the unavoidable connection between the rise of the military shooter genre and post-9-11 nationalism and xenophobia. <laughs> so what's it really about, sir? That's what it's actually about. Oh. Oh. Yeah. So I guess we're gonna... Just roll the credits, Ivan.
I probably shouldn't even bother clarifying this in the first place, because anyone dense enough to actually need this clarified is already recording their amateur angry webcam vlog directly to YouTube, but just for the record, no, I'm not planning to insinuate that Activision, Infinity Ward, or anyone else involved in making Call of Duty Ghosts is a racist, or even somehow directly invested in propping up the irrelevant, slowly dying, evolutionary dead-end behemoth that is the American political right wing. Honestly, that's one of the more disappointing things about investigating the destructive, often bafflingly counterintuitive decisions made by developers and publishers of certain so-called AAA games. You keep coming back to the same conclusion. These guys aren't evil, they're not malicious, they're just dumb. After all, one doesn't have to be a rocket scientist to suggest that building the storyline of the campaign mode of your latest creatively bankrupt military first-person shooter around the premise of a land invasion of the United States by a newly formed enemy nation comprising the entirety of South America might raise a few eyebrows, considering that armed racist yokels freaking out about the presence of Spanish-speaking immigrants in their country is kind of a big deal right now in the real world. Oh, we're gonna get letters about that one. But apparently nobody with the power to be heard or listened to at any point in the process of creating Ghosts was up to pointing out that releasing a game that could easily be taken as a kind of in-kind contribution to the most hopelessly xenophobic elements of the US consumer base might end up reflecting poorly on you, or that even the lame cop-out of making the main bad guy a white American dude just like the heroes isn't gonna work when the rationale for his evil is that the South Americans brainwashed him using their Amazonian tribal magic. Oh, you're kidding, right? That cannot be his real backstory. No, no, it, it totally is, Ivan. That's his backstory. Wow. Yeah, it's especially dumb when you consider that the console gaming's biggest growth market right now are outside the United States, which is pretty much saturated at this point. Hell, if you factor in that Americans of Hispanic or Latino descent are a huge part of the AAA gaming market audience, making a game where multiple missions involve fortifying and defending a giant wall blocking the U.S. southern border, because nothing uncomfortably political could be read into that, almost feels like deliberate sabotage. The sort of thing you'd pitch to your idiot boss to prove how big an idiot he actually is, like a video game version of Bamboozled. Bam Wetzeld? Bamboozled. It was a Spike Lee movie. It's about a TV executive who tries to create the most racist TV show ever made to prove that his bosses don't know what racism is when they see it. Was it any good? It's a Spike Lee movie, so like a third of it's really good and the other two thirds are a lot of pretentious film school bullshit, but yeah, I liked it. Ah. So is your point here that Goats is accidentally racist? <laughs> no, not really. I mean, it's super uncomfortable to be playing a game that feels like somebody let Joe Arpaio remake Red Dawn, but ultimately the ethno-linguistic identity of the bad guys is pretty much just white noise in the background. They're not the bad guys because they're South American, they're the bad guys because they're not United States Americans. That's still super sketchy, sure, but not more so than most other games in the series. It doesn't even seem to be going for the kind of 9-11 revenge catharsis that was so much a part of the modern warfare game, so there's that. I don't follow. Well, I always kind of felt like there was an element of, hey, are you still angry about what happened to the World Trade Center? Well, here's a game where you can blast the hell out of people who look and dress like the people who did that. And also the Russians, because, hey, they turned evil again, so it's cool. To modern warfare. Not full-on bigotry, just enough that in a decade or so, these games are going to look to people like racist-ass World War II-era propaganda cartoons look to us now. Hey, yes. Hundreds of them. This calls for strategy. Hurry, hurry, hurry! Get them while they're cold! Get your ice cream cane! Hey, uh, here's yours, bow legs. Here, one for you, monkey face. And don't shove, there's plenty for all. Here you are, slant eyes. Everybody gets one. Ice cream. Is that uncomfortable? I know, right? At least in Ghost, the Federation is so generic and basic of a villain that apart from speaking Spanish, there's not really anything to distinguish them from any other anonymous cannon fodder in this moribund franchise. Oh, hey, speaking of anonymous cannon fodder, it looks like the Senator has another announcement dropping. Many of you may question how, having yet to engage the official support of U.S. law enforcement agencies, the Oolong Tea Party will be able to actively combat the gamer menace. Others may question why this information couldn't wait for the end of the episode. Indeed, 
To this point, even my personal militia, Cobalt Corps, have proven unable to successfully contain the situation. Hey, door guy! You should come in here. The senator's talking shit about you and your boys. What? Thusly, we have decided to phase Cobalt Corps out, effective immediately, to be replaced by a new breed of superior bionic soldier, generously provided by the good folks at Merriweather Security. Holy shit! Merriweather? Holy shit! A gaming reference from this century? Allow me to introduce the Justice Iron Shadow Militia, a.k.a. Jism. Wow, door guy got downsized. Bummer, man. Nein, nein! They cannot do this to me. You are taking schnitzel from my children's mouths and beer from my ghastly pig of a wife. No, no, I'll show them. I'll show them all. Uh, yeah, you go do that. Where were we? So here's what I'm not getting, sir. Why do the Call of Duty games consistently keep having such dopey storylines in the campaign in the first place? Well, Ivan, to be fair, if you set aside the awkward stabs at present-day geopolitical relevance, Call of Duty's stories aren't that much stupider than a lot of other games. It's like the Uncanny Valley effect. It sounds enough like reality that the patently unreal stuff stands out more. That's kind of what I mean, though. Call of Duty keeps running into these story problems by trying to engage hypothetical real-world military business. And hiring accused war criminals as commercial pitchmen, don't forget about that. And also that, yes. So why don't they just do what the James Bond movies did almost right away and back up off the actual Cold War stuff in favor of, like, mad scientists and super assassins and all that stuff? Honestly, I think Call of Duty is kind of trapped by the very timing that made its success possible. Ivan is intrigued. Explain. We forget this, but realistic military first-person shooters being mainstream popular is still a relatively new phenomenon. For a while, the big trend for shooters was sci-fi, followed closely by urban action. And there was a reason for that. In the 90s, sci-fi and cop stuff was the big trend in action movies, and that's what gaming was imitating. But then the big trend of serious military action movies centered mostly on World War II happened, thanks to Saving Private Ryan and Band of Brothers, and that led to Medal of Honor and eventually the original World War II set Call of Duty. And that made sense, because from a Western and more specifically American perspective, World War II is possibly the best war to make a shoot a game out of. Shooters tend to be about pretty simple catharsis, and this is the last war it's still considered mostly okay to be simple and black and white about, because even a nation as spectacularly morally compromised as the United States was during that period, ahem, is still gonna come off looking like a goddamn superhero if the enemy is Hitler. It's true, they're the perfect bad guys. Like the man said, if the Nazis hadn't existed, Hollywood would have had to make them up. And if Hollywood hadn't, video games would have. So, what changed the course? Same thing that changed everything else. Oh, right. Now, we need to be really clear here, Ivan. Not everyone who got big into Call of Duty because of modern warfare did so because they were foaming at the mouth pissed off about 9-11 and wanted to take it out on digital Middle Easterners. That would be a grossly unfair generalization. I bet it was a lot of them, though. Probably, sure, but if Xbox Live taught us anything, it's that the world is full of just terrible people and that they like video games too. My point is, the creation and instant mega popularity of the modern warfare games wasn't an inevitable post-9-11 cultural development just because of the obvious if troubling catharsis factor. I mean, when you consider how quickly both the Afghanistan and Iraq wars became to varying degrees these murky, intractable, Vietnam-like scenarios playing out 24 hours a day on cable news, it's understandable to want exactly what Call of Duty was offering, a version of the war you could wrap your head around and control. But most of all, it was about a shift in the public consciousness, in the space matters of the military occupied in our minds, and how. One of the other reasons that World War II was such a go-to setting for games was that it was the only remotely recent good war that felt universally familiar to people because of its size, important in history, and constant presence in the movies, books, and TV too. But when the War on Terror was ramping up, well, that became the omnipresent image of war in the popular culture instead. Video games had no choice but to follow suit. There was just one problem. Which was? Well, Honestly, it felt like a digital microcosm of what went wrong with the wars during the Bush years in real life. Fighting on that scale had changed in the years between these new wars and the last war that popular culture cared to think mostly positive thoughts about. Changed how? Well, it goes back to how World War II finally ended, i.e. the debut on the scene of atomic weapons. That was the signal that World War II was the beginning of the end for war being about two huge alliances smashing their standing armies into one another. War, especially for nations the size of the United States, got smaller, nicher, more disconnected, more technological, more complicated, and less human. The sheer reality of that, though, hadn't really sunk in enough. So when it came time to respond to this new threat of terrorism, 
we kind of started out doing it the old-fashioned way. Big, full-scale invasions of enemy territory, lots of troops, lots of hardware, huge home-front media push. But suffice it to say, evil though they may be, and Al-Qaeda and that whole scene are a bunch of rat bastards, let's be totally clear, they weren't Nazi Germany, and this was not World War II. Okay, I get it, but what does that have to do with Call of Duty's goofy-ass story modes? Because they had the same exact problem. They wanted to do a modern warfare game, but more and more, actual modern warfare looks a lot more like playing Missile Command than playing a Call of Duty game. So they mostly just took their existing World War II template and tried to stretch the War of Terror around it like a second skin. Okay, here's Middle Eastern terrorism as the new bad guy, but that doesn't really fit the Nazi supervillain army template, so let's drag the Russians in, let's pull some James Bond and Tom Clancy stuff, anything to make the whole D-Day in the desert thing work just enough. And if you're stuck escalating the stupid but only in ways that don't go full-on into absurdist fantasy and break the realism hook from there, I guess you've got nowhere else to go but all of South America teams up to blow up the United States from space. And that probably won't be the end of it. Well, that's all around depressing. Is there a point where this ends? The series? No. But the dopey campaign stories? Yeah, I imagine they'll probably go too far and reach a tipping point sooner than later. So the stories will get better? Ha! No, no, they'll go away. Everybody knows the score. Call of Duty makes the money it makes because it's the Xbox Live multiplayer shooter. The story mode doesn't sell the games. As download and streaming and de facto always online becomes an even more permanent part of the landscape, some of the big franchises whose fan bases primarily buy them for multiplayer will start going multiplayer only, or at least exploring that option. And I can't think of a better candidate to take that plunge first than Call of Duty. But until then... Until then, until then, I look forward to playing the Call of Duty where the Canadians invade the United States because they want a staging ground to attack a moon colony. <laughs> or maybe it'll be a civil war between Alaska and Hawaii. Only if it turns out that it was actually just the Russians again. No, no, I got it, I got it. The next Call of Duty is the Swiss invade Australia, right? And the ghosts have to intervene because somebody's uncle was a koala or something. <laughs> <laughs> or, or maybe Al-Qaeda, Al-Qaeda, right, takes over Ireland so they can launch WMD at France and America goes to stop them because reasons. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 they, they should announce that they're finally going to do one of these in Vietnam, right? And then at E3, they just explain it's in Vietnam today and the bad guys are just the Russians again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I could do this all day. Hey, do you think Infinity Ward and Treyarch's writers rooms just have a big fucking map of the world on the wall and some darts? <laughs> I wouldn't... It wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> oh, we do have fun. Hmm. I can track one, but not the other. And where did he go? Door guy, what exactly are you doing? Senator Lieberson thinks I'm useless. And you think I'm a bit stupid, yeah? That's not true. Yeah, we think you're extremely stupid. Well, I'm going to show all of you. I know that you have a teleporter protocol in this system, and I'm reasonably good with computers myself, and I will bring the fugitive retro thinker here and apprehend him myself. <laughs> See how impressive those metal faced replacements look then. Retro thinker! Overthinker! Retro thinker! Ivan! Retro thinker! Cobalt Core, Retro Thinker, Dr. Scott, Rocky! You are coming with me, Retro Thinker. How about no? Don't make me use this. I do not need bullets to bring you down. Yeah, you're probably right about that. Might have helped with him, though. What? You! How? You weren't even on the scanner! Duh! I'm from another dimension, asshole! Radar can't track me! Or did you forget that part? Actually, yes I did. You see, our friend Retro Thinker there is gonna put his uniform on now and take his post. That way no one's gonna be the wiser that they don't got eyes on us no more. Ain't that right, kid? <sighs> All set! Perfect. Retro Thinker, actually... You, sit the fuck down. Why? Because we're out of time. 
You, me, all of us are in the middle of some seriously bad shit, Chief. And it's time you knew everything.